would be a wrong note. You uh, kind of walked in on me practicing the accordion, and that last note kind of sounded sour. So, did you know this is called an accordion? You may have seen it or heard it in maybe a Cajun or Zydeco band. And the way an accordion works is, do you see all of this? It's called the bellows and it stretches out and fills up with air much like when you take a breath and you fill up and then when it's pushed, just like your air being pushed out of your mouth, if someone pushes your tummy, the air comes out. You don't generally make notes when the air gets pushed out like that. The reason why the accordion makes sound is because when the air is pushed out, it goes across little thin strips of brass or some other metal, and th those are called reeds. Yeah. The accordion is basically a little organ little that you hold in your hands. There are organs, of course, that are large, huge mammoth instruments, and their pipes are not like a recorder. So a recorder is a pipe, basically, with holes cut in it and a mouthpiece. And when you blow air through it, out comes a note. And if you cover up different holes, you get different sounds. You know, Dorothy thinks that she's got a set of pipes that she needs to perform with. Do you want to hear her do her pipes? I call it singing with Mr. Holder. Come here, Dorothy. Okay, it's over, girl. She always likes to hold the note a little bit longer. Spotlight. The pipe organ is a large and grand instrument with lots and lots and lots of pipes huge pipes, tiny pipes, all to produce a fabulous sound. I want to let someone else talk to you about the organ, someone who knows a lot about the organ. He's the organist and the choir master at Christ Church Cathedral in the Garden District. Let's go talk to Mr. Jarrett Foliot, and he'll tell us more about the pipe organ. <laughs> Hi boys and girls, I'm here at Christ Church Cathedral, the Episcopal Cathedral on St. Charles Avenue, just down from Uptown Campus. And I am here with Mr. Jarrett Foliot, who is the organist and choir master here at Christ Church Cathedral. Thank you, Mr. Jarrett, for doing this for my kids. You're welcome. Yes, thanks a lot. So, how long have you been here at Christ Church? Uh, I came the year after Hurricane Katrina, so 2006. So I'm in my 14th year. So longer than you guys have been in school or alive, for that matter. When did you first start taking lessons? Oh, uh, I was I was probably eight or nine when I started. And of course, it was not organ. It was piano. I started with piano. That's right. Uh huh. And then I started organ when I went to college. Mm -hmm. And when did you get interested in the organ itself? I've always wanted to play the organ since I was a very little kid. It was an easy decision. Now, I know that Mr. Jarrett's dad is a pastor, so that's how I can ask this next question. So, uh, did you play for your dad growing up? I, I did for my dad. And no. I, oh, no, really? Because my dad always forced me to. No, he never did. No. Is this the largest pipe organ here in the city of New Orleans? Yes. So, it is. How many pipe organs are in New Orleans? And so Mr. Jared and I chatted for a while about different organs in the city and about his piano lessons growing up. 
and how he got interested in the organ. He said he just always was interested in the organ. After our little chat, I wanted to know about the big pipes that were right behind me. Um, so, let's talk about some of these huge pipes that you see back here. Uh, Mr. Jarrett, can you talk about the pipes and then maybe we'll go back in the back and look at them? There are over 5,200 pipes in this organ, and they all range in size from pipes about like this, which are very tall, to pipes that are tiny like this one and everything in between. This makes a very, very high, high, tiny sound. You can hardly hear it, it's so high. Um, and then those, of course, shake the floor when, you, when I play them. There was a little part of me that felt like Harry Potter at Hogwarts, walking down the stone hallways and the big creaking door. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to go down into the, what do you call this? The pipe chamber. We're going down into the pipe chamber to see the pipes. Let's go. Well, that's typical Mr. Holder banging his head going down into some place like the pipe chamber. Oh, well. When I got down into the pipe chamber, I was amazed at how many pipes were there. There were big pipes and skinny pipes and long pipes and short pipes, all lined up like little soldiers gleaming in the light. I sort of thought these little guys had mouths on them, and they sort of are mouths. Do you see those brown boxes that I'm walking towards? I wonder if you can guess what those boxes are. Hmm, think about it. Those are actually pipes that laid like this horizontally. So those are actually pipes. And then you'll see here some of the little pipes that Mr. Jarrett was talking about. So let's go here and play this organ. Mm. questions about the instrument, uh, not the, the pipes, but the, the physical makeup. Okay. So, All right. talk to me about why we have different uh, keyboards and why at different levels, as opposed to a piano which just has one set of keys. Right, so first of all, an organ is a little different from the piano in that the piano has 88 keys and most organs, mo modern organs only have 61. But what is this set of keyboards called? The, this is the great. The great, the the choir, swell, bombard. Oh, the bo oh, bombard, bombard, like when you bombard, it means you like come at it with everything you've got, which is the reason why all the, the bigger sounds are up there. That's right. The oh. pedal has 32. Um, so the different keyboards do have different sounds on them. The lower keyboard here has a very small, pretty sounds, like this clarinet. Um, which is very lovely. The, the next uh, keyboard is called the grate on this organ, and it's, it's really the guts of the organ. It's, it's the, the kind of the meaty organ sounds. Uh, so the grate would be something that uh, the, the, uh, the meat and the potatoes of the meal. Exactly. Okay. And then this has uh, 
more pretty sounds, and I can. Uh, so what is that one called? These these are called. They're trying to imitate the strings of an orchestra. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, Here, for example, that, that imitates an oboe. You might remember the oboe from Peter and the Wolf. Yes, good example. And then this manual has all the biggest, loudest sounds. Okay. Um, so, for example, the trumpet on the back wall called the trumpet on Shemad, I play from here. <laughs> Sounds like the king is coming in, very regal. But there's also another very big trumpet up front. Ooh. Awesome. And then also just um Fantastic. What are these things that you're pulling? What do we call those? Those are called stops and they control what pipes play at what time. Uh -huh. So if I want it to sound like a clarinet, I, I pull this one. Okay. Each one of those little round pulls or stops had a number on it. The number said how long, how many feet of pipe it was, four feet or eight feet. And when you pulled the stop, it sounded. Okay, so Elder Grant. So Mr. Jarrett explained to me more about the stops and the kinds of sounds that they made on the organ. For a congregational hymn. Nothing overbearing, nothing that's going to put you to sleep. Then our conversation turned to how complicated the organ was and what it must have seemed like to people living a long time ago to hear such a massive sound when normally they heard almost no big sounds in their lives. So then one key is activating four pipes. That's right. Four pipes. Four pipes. Uh-huh. Okay. Wow. No wonder this was called the king of the instruments, the pipe organ. It was the most complicated piece of machinery for a thousand years. And you know, my history professor said to me one time, if you were living in the 1600s, the two most complicated things you had was the pipe organ and a watch, if we had a watch a clock, a watch clock. That's right. Other than that, all you had was a horse and a buggy, or you went and you got water from the from the well, or something of that nature. You didn't have anything complicated. And so, if people wanted to hear, we're used to always hearing big sounds, you know, planes going by, or a big Mack truck coming down the freeway. But back in the day, if you really wanted to hear big sound, you really didn't have the best to go but the church, because you could hear the pipe organ play. And boy, that must have been an amazing sound every Sunday to go from something so quiet normally to something huge. I told Mr. Jarrett that I wanted to teach my students a song and I asked if he would play for me while I sang. He turned the tables on me and I played. Okay, so this is a, was not part of my deal when I was going to come over here. I didn't think I was going to sit down to the organ. But I want to teach you a song, and Mr. Jarrett said, why don't I play it? At first I said no, but I'm going to. Uh, we'll see. So, you need to know how it goes first. And, and the words are like this. All things shall perish. Perish means to, to die or go away. All things shall perish under the sky. So we're going to do it like this. All things shall perish under the sky. This is the sign language for music. So we're going to use that. Music alone shall live. And you're going to make L's like this and go for live. So let's do it again. All things shall perish under the sky. Music alone shall live. Music alone shall live. Music alone shall live never to die. Listen again. All things shall perish 
under the sky. Music alone shall live, music alone shall live, music alone shall live, never to die. All right, and so here's the tune. All things shall perish under the sky. Music alone shall live, music alone shall live, music alone shall live, never to die. We'll see. Thank you, Mr. Jarrett. All right, I'll see you back at my house. Wow, wasn't Mr. Jarrett great on the pipe organ? Really, really good. I'm glad you got to go down and see the pipes with me and hear Mr. Jarrett play. But now we're at the end of our music time with Mr. Holder and I want to end our lesson the way we always do, with our song Round and Round We Go. You should know it by now. Round and round we go, we hold each other's hands And weave our lives in a circle Our love is strong, the dance goes on Our love is strong, the dance goes on Bye!